Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're doing another index review. We are going to start the Adeptus Sororitas or Sisters of Battle. Um, chosen this one next because I haven't seen really anyone do one. They're obviously reasonably sparsely collected um, faction but I do know that there's a lot of fanatical followers as well uh, which is great. So want to uh, show those guys what they're what they've got in the index and uh, what they can expect. Obviously, uh, Games Workshop's now announced there's going to be codexes and reasonably soon. Uh, the Space Marine Stroke Primaris one is supposed to be coming out in July. Um, Chaos Space Marines in August, I think, Death Guard September, something like that. Uh, so we can expect them thick and fast. But I still think it's worth going through these index reviews for a couple of reasons. Number one, things like Sisters of Battle, this is why I've, partly why, why I've chosen them, are going to probably get one for quite a while. Um, so they're going to be gaining with these rules for a long time. And secondly as well, this gives you a good indication of what is going to be in the codex. Obviously, this is quite basic, so the codex will have a lot more. But rules-wise, these, these are kind of play tests for the codexes. Because the codexes are coming out so fast afterwards, you can imagine the Games Workshop is going to want to keep this more or less and then just go, oh, that was a bit too overpowered, or that was a bit lightweight, or we want to change that bit of background. And they'll just tweak it for the codex. So um, I still think it's well worth going through these. So, what we're going to do this time is go through the HQ and character choices and the troops choice as well. So, we've got Celestine, a Canoness, and then we've got three elite choices but they're all individual characters. So I'm going to go through them now as if they're HQs and then the Battle Sisters squad, so the only troops. So we're going to go through that this time and then there's going to be probably two more parts just to cover off everything else as well. So, first things first, have we got any special rules? No. So, what we have, but they're obviously all described in here. So, um, Act of Faith is one uh, rule they get. So, Act of Faith is roll a d6 at the start of each of your turns on 2 plus 1 unit from your army can do an Act of Faith. This can be moving as if it's the move phase, shooting as if it's the shooting phase, uh, fight as if it's the fight phase, obviously assuming they're in they're in one inch. Um, or one model can recover D3 lost wounds, or you can return a single slain model to a unit with one wound remaining. So that does mean you can return a multi-wound model, which is quite cool. Um, it's just that it comes back with one wound. So that's active faith, really cool little bonuses. So you can shoot as if it's a shooting phase, so you can obviously uh, get two shooting phases in with a really good unit, which is awesome. Things like that. Moving twice gets you really far across the board if you've got a combat unit. So, yeah, it's really good. Uh, it's at the start of each of your turn, so basically you do whatever the act is at the start of your turn and then go from there. So that's really cool. And they've got Shield of Faith, which is a 6 plus invulnerable save. In addition, um, you can attempt to deny one psychic power, however, you can only roll one dice. So, the 6 plus invulnerable is good, it'll come in handy occasionally. The denying the psychic power is also decent, but it won't come in handy too often because you've got to beat the successful cast. So they'd have to cast a five warp charge psychic power on five, and then you'd have to roll a six with your one die. So it's it, it, it's quite close. It can happen, but it's it, it's quite hard. Zealot, you can reroll failed hit rolls for a unit with this ability in a turn in which it charged, made heroic invention, or was charged. So the first turn of combat, you get rerolls. So that's the special rules we're going to go through so you know what they are before we start. We're going to start with Celestine, obviously got a absolutely stunning new model and was an absolute tank in the um, rules she got uh, previously in the Gathering Storm series. So we'll see what she's like here. So Celestine herself has a 12 inch move, a 2 plus weapon skill and blister skill, strength and toughness 3, 7 wounds, 6 attacks, leadership 9 and a 2 plus save. So really nice stat and line up and down, strength toughness 3 is reasonably weak but you'd expect that everything else is great really good seven wounds is brilliant six attacks is amazing so some really cool stuff there the gemini superiors are 12 inch move weapon skill three plus strength toughness three two wounds three attacks leadership nine and a two plus save so again good solid bodyguard worthy of celestine and they'll help her out celestine is single model armed with the ardent blade her unit can also include one Gemini Superior or two, each arm with a bolt pistol, power sword from frag and crack grenades. 
So Celestine, the Ardent Blade shooting is an 8 inch weapon, Assault D6, Strength 5, AP-1, Damage 1. This weapon also actually hits its target. So it, it's quite nice, you know, it's Damage 1 and AP-1 which are okay but not incredible. But the Strength 5, the potential of D6 shot and the fact it auto hits is, is pretty nice, you know. So a few extra hits before she goes in. The Iron Blade in Melee, though, is where it shines. So it's a plus four strength, so she's strength seven, which is incredible. She's got minus three AP, so basically, apart from Terminators, you, you know, you, you're barely going to have a chance of surviving. And it's two damage, uh, so instead of D3 damage, which, you know, you've got the higher end, but you've also got the risk of rolling one damage, you just get solid two damage every time. Considering she's got six attacks, you know, that could really stack up. Um, they get Acts of Faith and Shield of Faith, so we've been through them. Beacon of Faith, all friendly Adeptus Sororitas units within 6 inches of and add 1 to their Shield of Faith and Vulnerable Saves. All friendly Adeptus Ministorium and Adeptus and Astra Militarum units that are within 6 inches gain 6 plus in Vulnerable Save. So basically she gives Adeptus Ministorium and Astra Militarum units the Shield of Faith to start with. So they get 6 plus in Vulnerable, so that's, that's pretty cool. But obviously the main thing is Sororitas units go up to 5 plus. So you can put a couple of units either side of her and also and they've got 5 plus in Vulnerable saves, which makes them you know really quite tough considering they're all in power armour in the first place. The Armour of St. Catherine. Celestine has a 4 plus in Vulnerable save. Furthermore, any Gemini superior in her unit also has a 4 plus in Vulnerable thanks to her Divine Protection. So brilliant, she's got 7 wounds, she's got 2 plus save, 4 plus in Vulnerable save. Awesome stuff. That Toughness 3 is still there, but it's it's starting to be negated a bit. Saintly Blessings. At the start of any of your turns, you can pick a friendly Adeptus Sororitas unit within 6 inches of Celestine and perform an Act of Faith with it. This is in addition to the Act of Faith. So basically, she gets you 2 Acts of Faith a game, a game, sorry, a turn, which is brilliant. Um, yeah, obviously wonderful stuff. So you can shoot with 2 units twice a turn, or attack twice a turn. So that's that's really cool. Remember, in the fight phase one as well, it doesn't say that there are other unit fights back, it just says you fight as if it's the fight phase. I think something like Penitent Engines could fight twice, or something like that, which would be pretty horrendous. Healing Tears. At the start of each of your movement phases, you can set up a single slain Gemini Superior with all her wounds restored within two inches of Celestine. This is one of the best rules, because you get Gemini Superior back, which are pretty solid, as we saw, but the main thing, really, with that is that basically because they'll protect Celestine, Celestine effectively has 11 wounds, really, because they'll just sit in front of her and absorb all the hits. So the fact that you get one of those back every turn on full wounds means that if you kill both Gemini Superior and do Celestine two wounds, which is no easy feat, Celestine then goes, okay, cool, and now I've got one back. So you're going to get through her again to get to me. Um, so effectively, she goes back up to seven wounds almost. You know, it's, it's yeah, it's pretty awesome, really. Miraculous Intervention. Once per game, if Celestine loses the last wound, roll d6 on a 2 plus, she is not removed, but resurrected with all her wounds restored. So just let that sink in for a second. So if you actually kill Celestine, which is pretty hard as we've just seen, on a 2 plus, she just rocks back up with her 7 wounds and goes boo! Um, and kills everyone again. So, I mean, that's just an incredible rule. Makes her so tough. Um, yeah, amazing. Um, I think she's absolutely incredible. She helps the army around her. She's really tough, hard to kill, good warlord because you know it's going to take a while to kill her. It's just, yeah, brilliant. So, it's going to take just a second just to find the ah, points. Here we go. So, Celestine is 150 points and each Gemini Superior is 50 points. So, basically, it's 250 points if you want all of them. Um, unless you're on a tight budget points wise, I suggest you do that because they will take care of themselves, they'll give you loads of bonuses, and Celestine's going to be so hard to kill. So I, I think that's totally worth it. If you do want a cheaper one, have Celestine for 150 on her own. Frankly, for 150 points, she's a boss anyway. So she's an awesome choice, as she was before, which is good to see. So we're on to Cannonesses. So we've got a 6-inch move, 2 plus weapon skill, bliss skill, strength and toughness 3, 5 wounds, which is pretty nice, 4 attacks, leadership 9, 3 plus save. Comes with bolt pistol, chainsaw, frag, and crack grenades. So she can have a bolt gun instead. She can also have an eviscerator, which is kind of cool. And she can't have anything off the pistols list. She comes with axe of faith and shield of faith. She has a 4% vulnerable save, so again, making it pretty tough. 
and lead the righteous, you can reroll all hit rolls of one for friendly order units within six inches of this model. So that's really cool, it's order units, so that's basically anything Imperial, which is brilliant. So anything Imperial is rerolling ones within six inches of her, so she's really good to plop with the unit sisters in the middle of your guard army, and she'll help everyone around her. So that's really cool. Uh, bolt pistols, 12 inches, strength four, damage one. Bolt guns, rapid fire one, strength four, damage one. Chain swords, uh, strength to use it, AP dash, strength one. Every time you fight, you get an additional attack, which would give a five attack, so the chain sword's worth looking at. You've got frag crack grenades, um, crack grenades, strength six, AP minus one, damage D3. And frag grenades, grenade D6, strength three, AP dash, damage one. So one for tanks and monster creatures, one for infantry. The Eviscerator is times two strength, so she will be strength six, something to sniff at. Minus four AP, which is brilliant. D3 damage is brilliant, but you should trap one to hit. But considering she'll have four attacks, he's hitting on twos, I, I would I'd really look at that Eviscerator. She's got plenty of attacks, and she's still going to be hitting well. How much is a Cannon S? 45. Uh, do, do, do. All this stuff's free, I think. Chainsword, where's your chainsword? Yep. So the only thing you'd have to pay for is if you've, you've got an eviscerator, which is 22. So she's 45 or 67 with the eviscerator. Um, she's fantastic either way, to be honest. 45 points, you get the little buff, gives you a solid character. Um, whatever it was, 50, 67. She actually becomes a bit of a tank in combat with that eviscerator. So cannonesses are pretty blooming good. I'm liking the look of them. So these are actually three elite choices, an Imag Imaginifier, Hospitalia, and a Diagloss, but they're all individual characters, so I sort of covered them with the elites, uh, sorry, with the HQ choices. The Imaginifier is six inches, move, weapon skill, ballistical three plus, strength, toughness three, four wounds, three attacks, leadership eight, and a three plus save. Just looking at that as well, the Hospitalia has the exact same, but has weapon skill four plus, so just slightly worse in combat. Uh, Diagloss ha has weapon skill 4 plus and also has a 6 plus save. So he's a little worse in combat and has a worse save. So they're roughly even in their stat lines. Uh, the Imaginifier has a bolt pistol, bolt gun, frag and crack grenades. Covered all that. Axe of Faith, Shield of Faith. So basically, this next bit is the main reason you take them. This is the Simulcan Imperialis. Roy D6 at the start of each of your turns. On a 4 plus, you can pick a friendly order unit within 6 inches and perform an act of faith with it. This is in addition to the act of faith. So this on a four plus you get an act, extra act of faith, which is really cool. Obviously we've seen those act of faith are nice and powerful. One of the other awesome things about that is again it says order. So potentially uh, you could have a unit primary space marine and they get to shoot twice or fight twice because they're going to use the act of faith. So that's pretty nice for the sister battle certainly, but actually to be honest, pretty nice for all all imperials really. Definitely the Sister Battle seem to be um, made so they really help your uh, Imperial Army out. The only sort of thing with that is part of me is like, that's awesome, you'll see more Sister Battle, they get to uh, sort of merge in with the other Imperial units, which I think the Imperial Armies really should. The only negative of that is, does that make me think maybe they're not going to get a Codex, because they're trying to be encouraged to be mixed in with other armies. Maybe, maybe I'm reading too much into it, probably am, but just a thought there. So the Imaginifier is 40 points, and you don't have to pay for the uh, Simulcrum. So, yeah, um, totally worth it. Um, again, tie on points, fair enough, maybe not, but 40 points for a little bit of a hero. Not going to do much in the game, but mainly having that Imperialis. So if, if, if uh, she survives to the end of the game, that's three more acts of faith you'll have. So if you have two of them, you're going to average one extra turn, and it obviously multiplies from there. The Hospitaller, who's just slightly worse in combat, but nothing major, comes with tools. The tools are strength of the user, minus one AP, damage one in combat, so a little bit of a thing there. Axe of Faith, Shield of Faith, but again, one major rule why you take them, Healer. At the end of your movement phase, a Hospitaller can attempt to heal or revive a single model. Select a friendly Adeptus Sororitas Infantry, so this is for the Adeptus Sororitas only. Unit within three inches and roll D6. On a four plus, one model in the unit recovers D3 lost wounds. So this is perhaps better for multiple wound characters. If the chosen unit contains no wounded models, but one or more of its models have been slain, a single slain model comes back with one wound. So it's also useful if they've already lost people. You can only target the healing ability to each unit once per turn. 
that will cost you 30 points. So pretty cheap really. Um, I'd imagine the three of these are going to cost about 100 points, so if you had one of each. The only negative with that one is it's only it's only on a 4+, plus and you only bring back probably one model at a time, because most sisters don't have multiple wounds. So it, it's, it's not bad, it's just uh, I'm not as sure about that one as I am the Imagifier, because I don't really see who I'll be healing particularly, especially as Celestine can already do some healing for you. So that's that. The Diagloss. So he's armed with Diagloss Staff. The Staff is plus one strength in combat, AP dash damage one. So a little bit there. Uh, you subtract one from hit roll though. So certainly not a combat uh, character. Active face, shield face, but this is the main thing again. Lord Hailer. Friendly Adeptus Sorotus units within six inches of model can reroll fail morale tests. Bang. Reroll and fail morale tests for 15 points. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Got four wounds, so it's not like you're going to kill him or her really quickly. Reroll morale tests for 15 points. I, I'd have a couple of those, because I'd imagine myself having sisters of battle battle line. Um, they would advance, but it'd be kind of a battle line that stayed together. So he'd be able to really help out. So two of those for 30 points, well worth it. So I think the Imagifier and the Diagloss are really good. The Hospital is okay, but only really if there's a specific unit maybe that you want it to heal, that it'll work really well with. Finally, this, this, this video, we're just going to go on to the, the one and only troops choice. I believe it's the one and only troops choice. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. Which is a Battle Sister squad. So the Battle Sisters have a movement of 6 inches, a weapon skill of 4 plus, but a skill of 3 plus, so that's that's good. Strength and toughness 3, 1 wound, 1 attack, leadership 7, and a 3 plus save. The Sister Superior um, is exactly the same, but leadership 8 and 2 attacks. You get one Sister Superior and four Battle Sisters, but you can add up to another ten Battle Sisters, so you can have quite big units. They're all armed with bolt pistols, bolt guns, frag and crack grenades, so we've covered all of those. One Sister may replace bolt gun with a weapon from the Special Weapons. One can also then do Special Weapons or Heavy Weapons, so you can have two Specials, which is nice still. You have that flexibility, you don't have to have a Heavy Weapon, even though they're a bit better for units on the move now. The Sister Superior can replace a bolt gun with a melee weapon or ranged weapon. Uh, can also replace a bolt pistol with a weapon with the pistols list, so she can add some firepower and combat as well in there, which is nice. Uh, Axe of Faith and Shield of Faith. So let's have, see how much the sisters are. Nine points a model, that's nice. So ten of them is only 90 points. So even fully equipped, you're looking probably at 120-ish. So that's nice, ten battle sisters for 120 points is good. They are soft in some ways, strength and toughness 3, the weapon skill 4 plus isn't amazing, but Bliss skill 3 plus, they've got leadership 7 base, which is quite nice in the new rules. They've got a 3 plus save, they come with bolt guns, frag and crack grenades, so it's not, not a bad basic armament. And then like I say, the fact you can have two special weapons, or special and heavy, and a ranged weapon on the sergeant or superior, um, whether it's ranged or a pistol, and obviously a melee weapon uh, for 120 points is pretty good. Pretty good. I'm 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 pretty impressed with them. Okay, so they're, they're the units we're going to cover uh, just for this video. Just going to go back through them and give a sort of opinion. I think Celestine's fantastic. I think she affects so much around her. She's such a tough nut to crack. She can also dish it out. It's not like she's just tough. She can dish out some serious pain. You're basically not getting saves against her. She's striking at strength seven. She's got six attacks. Really nice. She affects other people, not just Adeptus Sororitas as well. So plonk her in the middle of an Astra Militarum army, no problem. Um, she doesn't affect Space Marines because they don't really believe in the Emperor as a god. So they won't believe in her as a saint. So not as effective with those, but still very good. Well worth points. 150 points, I mean, pfft, every day of the week. I think the Canis is really good. Again, really cheap. 40 odd points, 60 with the Eviscerator, which we figured is actually quite a nice armament for her. Uh, she'll slow four attacks, she'll still be hitting on threes. Um, I think she can do some real damage and she's nice and cheap to go along Celestine or if you've got only a thousand points to spend for instance you could have her as the lone hero. The Battle Sister squad, the basic troops choice is really nice, um, nice and cheap, you can uh, spam them a little bit um, and obviously the Immolators which we'll cover later I know are very good so they'll have a nice transport to ride in. Then finally the other three characters, I think the Diagloss and the Imagifier are really good really can help affect your army in a positive way. The hospital is okay, um, but not incredible just because I don't know who you're going to heal that's going to be 
Fantastic. So that's the end of part one. Um, there'll be part two and three covering the other um, units, and then I'll do a conclusion at the end of part three, sort of what I think of the index. But so far, really positive. The sisters really look like they're packing some punch and that they're at a good cost. So if you've got some sisters, dust them off, maybe give them a new paint job, depending on how long ago it was you used them. I'm really tempted to collect them. I'm not doing them at the moment because I'm doing my Primaris Black Templars and my Adeptus Mechanicus for my Tale of Gamers, so check that out on the channel. But I think they will be next new models or not, assuming the rules stay like this. So thanks guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.